Hello everybody. We're going to be reading chapter 15, which is the last chapter of School Days According to Humphrey. But before we do, I have a friend I want to introduce you to. Just like room 26 has Humphrey and Og in my house, we have Terrence. As you can see, Terrence doesn't look like the picture of Humphrey because Terrence is a winter white hamster. Now winter white hamsters are dwarf hamsters and as you can see, he's grooming himself right now. They are nocturnal. So guess what? Where he's awake, that would mean it is nighttime. Now while we're reading the story, Terrence is going to join us. But being that he's a little active right now, I may have to hunt him down every now and again. So should we get started? All right. Chapter 15. Best class in the world. I was on edge all morning. Everything in class was running smoothly now. And suddenly, the new students of room 26 didn't seem so strange anymore. Too bad I'd be leaving soon. I tried to shake and wiggle my worries away, but this time, it didn't work. I waited and waited and waited to get the bad news. But nothing happened until after lunch, when Miss Beckert came in, accompanied by Richie and Gail. They were smiling, naturally, because they were happy they were getting me back. Mrs. Brisbane. Your students from last year wanted to share some news with you. Do you have a minute? Miss Beckert asked. Miss Brisbane looked surprised, but she said, Sure, if you can share the news with my whole class. Miss Beckert smiled. Yes, of course. She turned towards the class. Mrs. Brisbane's students from last year wanted to get a classroom pet, she told the class. Of course, they missed Humphrey and Og. So I finally made a decision. Richie and Gail, would you like to announce it? Hermit, Richie said, stepping forward. That didn't sound like my name at all. Crabs, Gail said, giggling. And that didn't sound like Og's name either. What? Miss Brisbane looked amazed. We decided on something completely different. Six hermit crabs, Miss Beckert said. It was Ms. Mack's suggestion. Wonderful, Miss Brisbane said. How did you choose them? We decided there would never be a frog as great as Og, Richie said. Or a hamster as perfect as Humphrey, Gail added. I wasn't sure if that was true, but it was nice to hear. And, Miss Beckert added, six hermit crabs are very quiet, but they do better if they live in groups. I hope you enjoy them as much as we enjoy Humphrey and Og, Miss Brisbane said. Perhaps we'll come and visit them someday. But at the end of the day before she left, Miss Brisbane said, We noticed it takes six hermit crabs to replace the two of you. That made me feel very, very, very good. Whew! That was a close call, Og, I told my neighbor when we were alone again. I was unsqueakably delighted that I'd be staying in room 26. After all, someone needed to keep a close eye on Kelsey to make sure she didn't have any accidents. Joey wouldn't, be, wouldn't get to hear me giggle if I weren't around, and Harry's family's clock would be set back at any time. I still wanted to find out why Phoebe was so forgetful, and I wasn't sure yet whether all of Thomas's stories were real or just tall tales. I had a second surprise later that afternoon when Mrs. Mack appeared at the door. Are you ready? She asked. Come in, Miss Brisbane said. Oh, excuse me. Come on in, Mrs. Brisbane said. I guess I'd been dozing when Miss Brisbane had announced what was going to happen. Suddenly, my classmates were arranging the spare chairs stacked in the corner and setting them next to their own chairs. Then I was surprised, surprised, surprised when Miss Mack and her entire class of first graders entered the room. Mrs. Ms. Mack directed each of the first graders to sit next to an older student. The idea behind Brisbane's reading buddies is that the older children will show you their favorite books with the younger children, Mrs. Brisbane told them. Any questions? A small boy who was missing both of his top front teeth raised his hand. What's over there? He asked, pointing towards the table Og and I shared. Why, that's our hamster Humphrey and our frog Og, Mrs. Brisbane explained. Hi, 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 I squeaked, which made most of them giggle. Maybe you'll be in this class someday and you'll be and they will be your class pets, Mrs. Brisbane said. That seemed to please the first graders. It pleased me too. What pleased me even more was watching the students in my class patiently sharing books with the first graders and helping them learn to read. How on earth could I ever have thought they were the worst class in the world? The third surprise of the day came just before school was over for the day. Principal Morales stopped by for a visit. He was wearing a tie with colorful autumn leaves on it. Class, I just wanted to say that Mrs. Brisbane has told me that in the last few weeks, your class has improved more than any other 
any class she'd ever had. Mrs. Brisbane has been teaching a long time, so that's quite a compliment, Miss Morales. Mr. Morales paused and smiled at the class. She said you've made special progress in learning to work together, she, he continued. So I would like to congratulate you and encourage you to keep up the good work. Every face in room 26 had a smile on it, even mine. After school, Mrs. Brisbane hummed to herself as she gathered up her papers and her purse. Fellows, this has been quite a week, hasn't it? It's the kind of week that makes me glad I'm still teaching, she said. That was nice to hear because I didn't want Mrs. Brisbane to stop teaching ever. I'll still have to decide who makes your home, who takes you home this week, hum, weekend, Humphrey, she said. It will have to be a surprise. I didn't mind being surprised. The new students in room 26 who had seemed like strangers a few weeks ago all felt like friends now. That was a very nice feeling. When Aldo came into the room for the night, the first thing he said was, Hermit crabs! He laughed so hard his mustache shook. I never would have guessed he'd picked hermit crabs. They're crustaceans, you know. No, I didn't know, I told Aldo, but it doesn't matter whether they're crustaceans or primates or amphibians. They're classroom pets, and I'll bet they'll do a very good job. Of course, I couldn't resist the temptations to pay a visit to room 18 after Aldo's car had pulled out of the parking lot that night. But as I slid under the door of Miss Beckert's classroom, I was a little nervous. What if hermit crabs were as unfriendly as George? I looked at the, win at the table by the windows, and there were only stacks of folders there. An eerie glow from another wall caught my attention, and there, on a table, was a large aquarium with a light on it. I inched closer and looked up at the unsqueakably odd sight of the hermit crabs. They weren't golden and furry like me, and they weren't green and googly-eyed like frog, like Og. They were pinkish and shiny and had pincers I wouldn't like to come in contact with, but I, I have to admit, they were interesting. Welcome to Longfellow School, I said, even though they probably couldn't understand me. I hope you know that you're in one of the best classes in the world. They just kept wiggling, so I continued. And I'm in the I'm in one of the other best classes in the world. Since they didn't have anything to say, I turned away, but before I left the room I turned back. By the way, I squeaked, my name is Humphrey. I'm the hamster in room twenty six. I'm not completely sure, but I think one of the hermit crabs waved to me. I waved back. Once I was back in my classroom, I told Og about the hermit crabs. I guess it's nice that they're all crustaceans, I told him, but personally, I'd rather have an amphibian as a neighbor. It makes life more interesting. Boing, 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 he said, which made me think he was happy to share the table with a rodent. I took out my little notebook and I finished my poem, Writing in the Moonlight. Autumn, oh, Autumn, you had my poor head spinning, but now I am happy to have a new beginning. Humphrey's Rules of School. Love the class you're in. I do. Next page. Humphrey's top 10 rules for classroom pets. Hamsters, frogs, and even hermit crabs. One, listen to your teacher. If it wasn't for your teacher, you wouldn't have a job and you might still be stuck in a boring old pet store. Two, when a student needs help, always lend a paw. If you have pincers instead of paws, be very, very, very careful. Three, if you have a lock that doesn't lock, keep it a secret. Four, remember all doors are not the same height and being stuck under one is unsqueakably scary. Five, in case of emergency, and classroom pets have many of those, try and stay calm. Six, learn to tell time. It's a skill that can come in very handy. Seven, be a friend to other classroom pets, even if they're a different species. Eight, even if they seem strange, new students can be every bit as nice as old, familiar students. Nine, you can learn a lot about yourself by taking care of another species. That's what Ms. Mack said and she's unsqueakably smart. And 10. Humans need you. Please be kind to them. My friends, that is a wonderful story, and I hope you were able to come to the library because we have the entire Humphrey series. So we have Surprises According to Humphrey and Winter According to Humphrey are some of the other ones that you are able to check out in the library. 
Have a great night. Keep reading. See you in the library.